Hi, everyone. Say something in the chat if you can hear me. Do you see the message? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can you go to the other room and turn your sound on? Yeah. Hi, Laura. Hi, Mrs. Lowry. Thank you guys for showing up. Max is my, hi Emma. Max is my stage manager. Um, and DJ later on, as you'll, you'll see. Glad you guys can hear me, good. I'm just, I'm going to wait to officially begin until probably 7.32. Hi, daddy. You can hear me just fine. Okay. I feel like I should move that mirror more. I got it. So yeah, hold tight for a few minutes. Thanks for getting here early. Is it auto powers off or something? I'm going to mute myself until I begin. Okay, I should be muted now. When the light's blinking, it's muted. I'm gonna mm -hmm. face this towards me. <sighs> Start exact. I think like seven thirty two. Okay. What do you think? Isn't that the CIM one? Mm -hmm. You are not muted. Okay, I won't bother trying then. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. We'll get started in two or three minutes. Thank you, Jude. Thank you, Max. <laughs> okay, just a few more minutes, just to make sure everyone's here. 
pretty sure I'm using this microphone. I think it's my default. Mm -hmm. I have an external microphone I'm testing out. One more minute. Martha, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for showing up. And um, if you ever feel at all inspired to invite more people, um, you can access this stream at any point when it's live. So if in 10 or 20 minutes from now, you feel so compelled to text the link to a friend, they can join in later. Um, I want to direct your attention to the description below. Um, it has all the relevant information about links to donate to various um, places that I'll be touching on later in this concert. Um, so whenever you feel emotionally drawn to any of those at any point, um, please just open them in another tab or save those links for when we're done. Um, so this concert is a tribute to the life and legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And more than that, um, when she passed away on Friday, um, just like so many people, I was scared for the future and what's going to happen um, in terms of the election and her replacement on the Supreme Court. And um, in general, it's easy to feel hopeless right now. Um, and as specifically for me as a music student, I'm like practicing and doing rehearsals and going to class all day. And I just have been thinking like, I wish there was something more I could do. Um, and it hit me last Friday that um, I needed to put myself out there and try doing something. <laughs> and um, that's what this concert is all about. Um, it's not terribly long. Um, in terms of how long all the different pieces of music are. Um, and uh, I wanted to feature lots of female composers. Female composers in the classical tradition are not standards. So um, I'm not playing like maybe the most diverse female composer program. It's just what I um, was able to prepare in a short a few days notice. Um, so I'll be talking about each piece as we go along. Um, but to start, uh, I just want to remind you all a little bit about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You all know probably um, how much she did as a lawyer, a judge, and a Supreme Court justice for feminism and for women's rights um, legally. Uh, in the 1970s, it's hard to believe, but um, women couldn't uh, take out a loan or start a bank account without the signature from her father or her husband. And um, we have Ruth Bader Ginsburg to thank for changes like that, that help to even out the playing field and give us all a little more equality. The first piece I'm going to be playing is by a British American composer named Rebecca Clark. Uh, she was from England and then moved to the United States. And 
she was a violist, a very well-known performer, and probably her most well-known piece that she wrote was her viola sonata that won a viola sonata competition in 1919. Um, and this piece was written in 1941. It is called Pasacalia on an Old English Tune. So basically she took a pre-existing old English folk tune and transformed it using her own musical style. And normally this would be performed with a pianist, but I, alas, only have myself. Um, but that is what I'm about to play.
hi everybody. Um, yeah, that was the first piece. Uh, I can sense your applause. Um, <laughs> so before I get into the next piece, I want to talk about donating to the various links that you see below in the description and why to support. So before I get to anything else, um, I'd like to draw your attention to, I think, the third link down, which is the Louisville Bail Fund. Brianna Taylor's court case was not ruled in favor of justice for Brianna Taylor. Um, and this fight just is ongoing. Um, of course, uh, I'm not, I didn't prepare to talk about this uh, because this all happened today. So please click the link and learn about what's going on. Justice for Breonna Taylor is so important. Um, and as always, Black Lives Matter. Um, so I want to also talk about why I support Joe Biden for president and Kamala Harris for vice president um, and why donating to their campaign is so important. Um, so I was a very enthusiastic Elizabeth Warren supporter. I voted for her in the primaries. I really felt like I found a candidate who aligned with everything that um, I would hope for in a leader and a politician. And I also really liked Bernie Sanders. So there was a degree of disappointment when Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren dropped out of the race. Um, but as I've gotten to know more about Joe Biden and follow him on social media and hear speeches that he's given, um, he is not only like more progressive as time goes on, which I personally like, but for the spectrum of political beliefs, uh, it's extremely clear to me and um, I hope all of you that um, a vote for Joe Biden is more than just an endorsement of his politics specifically. Um, the handling of the coronavirus in our country has been an utter failure. failure. Um, 200,000 people have died and President Trump and his administration sat on important information and did not give us the help we needed. And the proof is in the rest of the world that is not suffering as much as we are, that it is in the hands of politicians to protect the citizens from a pandemic like we have seen. Um, Joe Biden has a health care plan. Um, President Trump has had four years to present a, a plan. Uh, and all that we've seen is an attempt to repeal Obama's um, legislation regarding health care. The environment is a really important issue. Um, the fires we've seen, hurricanes, all of those are ramping up because of unchecked climate change. And while our individual vo uh, choices do matter, um, it is up to governmental bodies and corporations to be held accountable and make important changes in this huge global issue dealing with climate change. Um, we are doing this to our country, to our planet, and our country is um, not equipped currently to put in the solutions we need to preserve a livable world for generations to come. And um, we don't have the time to you know, worry about if Joe Biden is exactly what we want or not, because time is running out to deal with climate change in a serious way. Um, let me see if I forgot anything. There have been threatening trends of signs of fascism. And I know it is taboo to compare our country to fascist countries of the past, but um, voter suppression the um, spread of misinformation endorsed by the White House administration, um, the defunding and uh, suppression of the Postal Service during an election year, 
threats of violence against marginalized populations, including Black Lives Matter protesters and Black Americans in general, all of, and not to mention um, sterilization going on at the border um, and kids being locked in cages. All of these are extremely troubling and it's easy to get fatigued by all of it and start to tune it out because it's not directly our life necessarily, but we do not want this to go any further and we have to reverse all of these horrible trends towards fascism. And a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for democracy. And I cannot stress that enough. The other fund, um, in addition to the bail fund and the Joe Biden's campaign, which you can donate any amount to, to help him reach as many people um, in the country to influence their vote in favor of preserving democracy. Um, the other fund is called Get Mitch or Die Trying. A lot of the issues we face today, and especially the issue of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's replacement, actually fall in the hands of Senator Litch, Mitch McConnell, who is the majority leader in the Senate. And the fund donates to campaigns across the country um, for Democrats to uh, take over these long held Republican seats, including Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and others. So a $13 donation would be split 13 ways and you would give a dollar to a bunch of different campaigns at the fund's discretion. And they have information on their page if you would like to check that out. Um, and yeah, I just wanna say one more thing. You don't wanna wake up on November 4th and wish you had done more. And I know most people watching are able to give $2. Maybe, maybe you're able to give $20. Um, and that's why I'm doing this concert because music brings out our emotions. It's a time to reflect. And I hope that um, some positivity and shedding light on music maybe you've never heard before is the inspiration you need to donate. So the next piece I'm gonna play is the Cello Suite, number one by J.S. Bach. A lot of you will probably rec recognize the first movement. There are six movements, they're all relatively short. Um, Bach was a German composer in the Baroque era and these pieces were written in 1720. So enjoy. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
nice comments everybody um okay so the next piece i'm going to play is um by a composer named amy beach and she lived in the late 1800s early 1900s the piece was written in 1893 and i believe she was from new hampshire and if you're doing the math she did not have the right to vote when she wrote this piece. So um, I want to talk a little bit about how music and politics are related. And I think it's a little bit hard for us because it feels like our favorites are being trashed or taken away or we can't like Beethoven anymore. And of course, that is not true. <laughs> so there's the sound of music, which is subjective and anybody can write good sounding music that we enjoy. And um, no one can take that away from you. Um, what I do think is important is that when we as musicians choose what pieces we're going to play for other people, or when institutions like opera houses or orchestras or string quartets choose what music they're going to present to the public, um, whether they know it or not, it is a political decision. It is a decision that tells the audience, this is who we believe are important enough to study so hard and share with you. And um, for the longest time, most, concerts have been all white male European composers. And um, we can't help that this is the world we entered when we started playing our instruments or started being interested in classical music. Um, but what's important to remember is that the classical canon or the standard repertoire that every musician is expected to know how to play is not a self-regulating entity. Um, it's easy to assume that the pieces that are the best remembered and played on every concert are there because 
they stood the test of time and they are the best. And for a lot of music, that is totally true. Um, Beethoven is a composer that I love so much. I just played Bach because he's one of the most loved composers ever. But the minute we start to insidiously assume, catch ourselves assuming that every piece Beethoven wrote is better than and more worth performing than any piece any woman in the history of time wrote, then we start to realize the system that we're in. And um, it doesn't take much for me to learn this music instead of that other Brahms piece that I could learn. They both have equal value. I hope you guys are enjoying the music so far. And yeah, I just wanted to say that music and politics are related and it's okay to, to keep your favorites and it's also okay to make room for some new favorites who maybe have a different skin color or gender or perspective. So without further ado, here's Amy Beach's Romance. It's for violin and piano, but I'm gonna be playing it just on viola today.
Okay. Thank you. Hi, Teresa. Um, okay. The final two pieces I'm going to play are two art songs by Clara Schumann. And before I get to those, uh, oh, there's Max. He's my DJ. I just want to make a reminder, if you feel so compelled, any dollar amount to um, Democrat Senate races, Joe and Kamala, and the Louisville Bail Fund will make such a difference. And I hope that um, this evening of really nice music by old favorites and new favorites has um, re-energized you in this fight. It is so important that we keep going even when we feel hopeless. And I definitely don't want to have any regrets at the end of all of this. Um, so back to Clara Schumann. Um, she unfortunately is best known for being uh, a musician who is married to Robert Schumann, who was a famous composer. Um, but she was a very accomplished solo pianist and composer in her own right. And she was a mentor to Johannes Brahms, who is a very important classical music composer. She was German and um, she has a lot of really nice music. Um, I decided since I've never played any of her music to just look up if she had any songs. Um, and she does, she, ha she has Opus 13 Zex Leader, which means six songs. I'm gonna be playing them on viola and we have a Bluetooth speaker hooked up. Luckily there are pianists out there who've recorded themselves playing just the piano part. So I'm gonna be playing along with them. I wish I could give credit to the pianists, but they don't say who they are. Um, so I'm gonna be doing two songs, both of them are really short. And I want to read you the translation of each of them. And if you would like to refer to the translation while I'm playing or later, uh, you can find that in the description of the video. So the first song is called Der Mond kommt still gegangen, which means the moon rises silently. The moon rises silently with its golden glow. The weary earth then falls asleep in beauty and splendor. Many thousand loving thoughts from many faithful minds sway on the breezes over those who slumber. And down in the valley, the windows sparkle of my beloved's house, but I in the darkness gaze silently out into the world. Let me just get the music ready. Thank you. 
And I would like to close out with one more. I'll read the translation to you all. Um, this translation is what um, solidified for me that I needed to play this at the end. And uh, I just want to say, may Ruth Bader Ginsburg rest in peace and may her memory be a blessing and a motivator to all of us. The song is called Ich stand in dunklen Träumen, which means I stood darkly dreaming. I stood darkly dreaming and stared at her picture and that beloved face sprang mysteriously to life. About her lips, a wondrous smile played and as with sad tears, her eyes gleamed and my tears flowed down my cheeks and I cannot believe that I have lost you. Thank you for all the comments that you've left everybody. And thank you for joining me. I'm so glad to have all of you um, support me and support the causes that we all care about so much. Um, thank you, Jude. Thank you so much. Thanks, Emma. Um, if you would like to save the links in the description for later, copy and paste them into a new tab. Um, Donate every week, donate what you can, share things on social media, talk to your family if they're on the fence, um, make your voice heard, and that's how we're going to get through this. Um, so I'll leave the chat up a little longer just so everyone can say whatever they would like to say. Um, but overall, thank you so much uh, for coming. It means a lot. Ah, oh, Michaela, hi. Oh, thank you, Joyce. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Laura. Hi, Denise. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lowry. Hi, Miranda. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Miranda. Thank you, Teresa. 
Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad to have been able to share this music and like be familiar with it myself. Um, my recital for school is in like three weeks and I'm playing the Amy Beach on that. So I'm hoping to have a good recording with piano uh, to share on my social media after then. Oh, thank you, mom, love you. <laughs> Okay, anyone want to see Max? <laughs> okay, well, thank you for coming. I hope you feel this was an hour well spent. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Have a good evening, everybody. Hi, Martha. Martha says, hi, Max. Emily got active. Okay. Uh, if you have anything else to say, text it to me. I'm ending the stream now. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bye.